Hey YouTube, it's Corlash 1990 and today I have another Sorcery TCG deck tech and today it is for my Seer deck and apologize for the, the lighting, there's something going on with my uh, the camera on my phone so the lighting is not exactly where I want it to be so just, you know, stay with me here on that. So anyway, this deck, uh, Seer, was originally one that I had in my cube because I didn't really know how to like make a deck for it it's almost too open for me to really grasp like a concept on it and so i kind of just like studied you know what it actually does compared to some of the the other cards in the the set and everything and i figured um just doing a lot of filtering effects with like a burn package would be pretty decent for this and in testing it's it's worked out pretty well so i took seer out of my cube as one of the starting avatars you can play and just built its own deck and now I have the just the uh, sorcerer for my cube is like the starting avatar so anyway let's go over seer it has a 20 health one attack as the usual tap to player draw sight and then it says at the start of your turn look at your next sight or spell you may put it on the bottom of its deck so card filtering is essentially what this does and it can do it for your spell book or your atlas um, very powerful effect this is actually a really good avatar it just doesn't have a lot of you know fancy stuff going on with it like uh, pathfinder or you know like the the battle mage but um the subtle little advantage can go a very long way throughout the course of a game especially some of the cards that we have in this deck so that is basically what seer does so i'll go over the atlas deck first and it's a um, Water air deck, so we have three of the uh, dual for that, obviously. Uh, Maelstrom, it, we don't really use this concept a whole lot. You can do some stuff like pulling in things and then having your um, Grim Reaper like finish stuff off. But it's, it's just a good water site. Same with the Tadpool Pool. And then I have four of the Spring River, mainly because it's the one that I like the artwork to the most. And it is kind of important that we have at least one river in play. And then for the air sites, I have Cloud City. Again, we don't really use it for its ability. It's just a cool air site we have, but it, it can basically like float around. I have one of each of the three towers, the Lone, Dark, and Gothic. These will add you additional mana when you play them, as long as there's no other named copy of them in play. And then probably one of the more key sites in this deck is Observatory. Uh, this is probably the best air site in the game currently i i think even by far better than uh, these basically you play it and you get to look at your next three spells put them back in any order so it's more uh card filtering perfect for seer basically perfect for any deck that's playing air i have uh, three copies of mountain pass minions cannot enter here on the ground if there's already a minion on top and then finally rounding out the deck with two crossroads because you should be running crossroads in every single deck uh, the card's amazing my opinion it's the best site in the game and yeah i've kind of gone over <laughs> i've gone over crossroads a lot already so anyway that is the atlas deck get into the main deck and i'll separate the air and water cards so i'll go over water first i'm running mother nature with the whole stacking the top of the deck and whatnot um, that could be cool with mother nature we do have about 20 minions in this deck so the chances of you getting that off are pretty high and it being a spirit is pretty relevant as well mainly for ghost ship you know, six sauce five power this is one of our like closer units and it's got void walk and whenever it enters a site from the void you can summon a spirit from any cemetery here to its location so it being a spirit can summon it's you know one can summon the other uh, mother nature is a spirit we have some other spirits in the deck as well um, grim reaper is also a spirit so on and so forth so it felt pretty key and thematic for this deck next is the card that actually led me to play water while trying to figure out a deck for seer and that's deep sea mermaids uh, three cost one power two water threshold it has some merge we don't really care about that it's genesis ability is a draw your bottom most spell so it's the bottom most so with seer let's say you have seer's ability go off you really like the card on the top of your deck and you have one of these in your hand tuck that you know card or spell on the bottom of your deck draw another card then play deep sea mermaids they get that good card that you put on the on the bottom with a uh, seer 
So it's allowing you a good card that you want on top of another card draw. So it's a pretty neat little interaction there. And I have four of those. I also have four of the Fenvale Muse. Um, essentially, it's a spellcaster, which is cool. One cost, one threshold, zero power. Uh, yeah, spellcaster, and whenever it casts a spell, you may trigger the genesis of a nearby river. And river is you look at the top card and you can keep it there or put it away. So with Muse getting to trigger more filtering on top of more filtering with Seer, it's all just... It's, it's a lot of card filtering. This deck is a ton of card filtering. And then the round out water, I have the like one of the main burn spells for water. In fact, probably the only one. It's uh, Ice Lance. Three cost, one threshold. You shoot a piercing projectile, deal three, then two, then one damage to up to one unit at each of the first three locations along its path. And if you have the Muse cast the spell, you get to do extra card filtering and so on and so forth. And now over the air cards, which is a good chunk of the deck because air is very good in this game. Let me kind of scoot some of this over. So to start things off, we have Grim Reaper. Two cost, two air threshold, one power. It's lethal. And whenever it kills a minion, banish that minion in all copies. So you search uh, the owner's cemetery, hand, and spellbook and banish all of them. So it just permanently gets rid of a problem. And if this thing ever dies... You can have your ghost ship just bring it right on back and keep doing its thing. To continue on with the uh, spirit theme, we have two Nimbus Chin. This is your other uh, finisher for the deck. Six cost, two threshold, four power. Airborne, which is a very good ability in this game. And you can discard a spell to deal three damage to another random unit here. So you can discard uh, spirits and then have your ghost ship bring it back if you really want to. Or just trade up cards that aren't as good for just straight raw damage. Next, running uh, one of the better cards in this game at the moment, which is Grandmaster Wizard, a six cost, two threshold, zero power, spellcaster, genesis, draw three spells. So essentially, draw a new hand. Um, yeah, I can't stress enough how great that card is. Next, we're running three copies of Wind Sylph, two cost, two threshold, one power, airborne, and air spellcaster, so it can't cast this, but it can cast all the other air stuff that we have. It's a spirit as well, so I can keep coming back with Ghost Ship. And after one self casts a magic spell, she may push a unit here one step. So there's a there's a lot of crazy little interactions you can do with that. You can push, you know, your own stuff forward to close in the gap. You can push opponent's stuff away, and so on and so forth. It's cool with uh, the giant shark, which I don't have in here. I did originally, but I took it out. But uh, she can basically make things move, and then the shark would go and attack them, which is pretty funny. But I chose to run a spiral lich over the uh, over over the shark. So, because mainly I didn't really have this card in any deck, and I love the artwork to spiral lich, which is a three cost, one threshold, one power. It's undead. It's not a spirit. You know, I mean, if you know what a lich is, it's obvious that it's undead. But um, if the lich is on top of a tower, it has plus two power, ranged, and also a spellcaster, which is Good, because we have a fair amount of burn stuff in here. And then finally, to round out the minions, we have four Apprentice Wizard. Again, if you're running air, you should probably probably be running these along with, you know, running those. And it's a three cost, one threshold, one power, spellcaster, genesis, draw spell. So, you're going to be digging through our deck a ton. And <laughs> all the while, you know, going to be filtering with all the river effects, the, the muse, the seer at the start of your turn setting up free plays with Mother Nature. It's just the, the whole game is kind of just like, you kind of know what's coming, right? You know, like the future and everything. And it plays out pretty pretty well and pretty consistently. And now this is all of our burn stuff. So I'm running three Thunderstorm. This is an aura, a four cost, two threshold. And at the end of the turn, it deals three damage to a random unit atop affected sites. Then you may move it one step. And after it deals damage three times, you dispel it so you get rid of it. So there's more burn. Got three chain lightning, two cost, two threshold, deals two damage to a unit nearby. Any number of times, you may spend two more mana to additionally target a new unit nearby the previous one. So it can kind of just like ricochet lightning bolts all over the place. It's really good if there's a bunch of human minions running around clogging up the board. Um, it's also just good damage, more, more the merrier. And then finally, to round out the deck, we're playing Lightning Bolt. 
two cost, one threshold, deal three damage to a random unit at target location. So it's, you know, pretty much the quintessential uh, burn spell for air. You could run fire, but uh, like over air, but I liked the utility of air, especially with the spirits. But you know, build it however you want to, I suppose. But I, I really love air. <laughs> it's so much for the artwork, for the overall play style, and so on. And yeah, that's, that's basically the deck. Um, it's nothing too fancy. It's a very straightforward deck. It's just drawing into the things that you want when you need them. And uh, initial idea I had with this deck was running a bunch of one ofs and a lot of like key situational cards and then getting into them with Seer. Uh, I found that too many games were clogged up with things I didn't need or were, weren't relevant for the situation. And so I, just, I, I made it more mainstream, more simple, because sometimes less is more. So anyway, that is my deck tech. Um, thank you all for watching. I'll have the deck list in the description down below as usual. But um, yeah, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. See ya.